everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Tonight, folks, we are happy to welcome a new group of seven stations of the Michigan Network who are going to broadcast this program. Even more thousands, therefore, will now be able to enjoy the programs of Lum and Abner. And now, before we go any further, I want to tell you about a little experience I had the other day. I was in a drugstore I'd never been in before. When in came a woman with two little children. I want a one-pound package of malted milk, she said. And don't try and sell me that brand you told me was just as good as Horlicks. It just wasn't. Give me the Horlicks this time. I know what I'm getting then. Well, that druggist didn't say a word. He just wrapped up the Horlicks, made out the check, handed it to the woman. Well, after she'd gone, I asked him if he had many customers like that. Customers who insisted on Horlicks. Oh, yes, he says. More and more. They are just as keen as ever, he added, on getting a bargain. And they seem to realize that Horlicks is the best bargain they can find. Folks, remember this. It's important to always keep a package of Horlicks on hand in the home. It has so many uses. Insist on Horlicks, the original and genuine, either in natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner have hired Squire Skimp to assist them in building a real circus out of the collection of animals that Abner traded for recently. The Squire has been busy over the weekend and plans to open the new show within the next few days. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner on their way over to the circus grounds in response to a call from Squire. Listen. Uh, what, what does Squire want to see us about, Mom? Um, I don't know. He called up there at the store and said for me to get you and come on over here to the circus grounds. Want to talk over a few things. Yeah. Well, I'll hand Squire one thing. He's a worker. My dog is him and Cedric has been working over there in that tent ever since we hired him. Yeah, oh, yeah. He knows the circus business backwards and forwards. He's got some good ideas, too. Yes, he has. He has. Just as long as he can't get his hands on none of the money, I don't see no way for him to beat us out of nothing. Oh, no, no. Me and you can look after the business end of it. But I don't see how we could have got along tall, old Lump Tot Squire. He says he's going to make a real circus out of it, sideshow and everything. Sideshow? Yeah, he's going to have a sword swallower and a fire eater and a tattooed man and a bearded lady and a fat woman. He, he sent me over to see the Witter Abernathy yesterday to see if she'd be the fat woman. <laughs> the Witter Abernathy? Yeah. And did she get mad? I never got such a tongue lashing in my life as she gave me. Run me clean off from the place. Well, you crazy ape, you ought to have more sense than to even try to hire her. You know how catchy she is about being fat. What did you call me? An uh, ape, I said. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, how do you know the Witter better than that? Well, I do now. We might get Effie Phillips now. Effie. Brung it up. She'll mm -hmm. kick them scales up to around 390 pounds. Yeah, sure. I forgot about her. But I ain't going to ask her. I know that. Oh, well, she ain't techy about her size. But didn't judge her about it without her getting her back up over it. She says herself she's the fattest woman in the county. Yeah. Well, Squire will have her cover more territory than that told on. She joins up with us. He'll say she's the fattest woman in the world when he gets done. Mm-hmm. Squire said for us to come right on over here. He'd be here, but I don't see him no place around front here. Oh. Well, maybe he's on on the inside of the tent there somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> sort of quiet around here, ain't it? Yeah, it is. I'll be glad when we get ready to open up for business again. I dog it, I do love a circus business. Well, Squire said... Wait, wait, John Reed is uh -huh. right there at the furry end of the tent. Yeah. yeah it looks like he's doing some painting of some kind back there. Oh, I see. Look at the signs around here. <laughs> uh, Granny says you're looking better already. Yeah. Well, you're listening to them lines. Yeah, right? oh, they keep that up all the time. They just pace backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards all day long. find out someday they can't get out of them. Dude. No, it don't look like they'll ever learn. Well, I don't blame them. If I was in there, I'd do some pacing myself, I reckon. You got signs around all over the different cages. Huh? Oh. Tell us what they are, I reckon. Well, look there. Uh, he's painted one of them elephants white, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> he said the other day he's going to whitewash one of them. See there, that sign there? Only white elephant on exhibition in the world today. Well, yeah. <laughs> so on that good night. Now, what's he going to do if it rains, though? Get him out in a parade and start raining, that whitewash will come right off of there. Yeah, I don't believe that's going to work. Oh. 
You know, Abner, I don't feel this right about misrepresenting nothing that way, no way. Well, no, I don't either, Mom. I, I've been sort of thinking about that. You know, we ought to tell the truth. I think we better speak to Squire about it. Yeah. Look there. According to that sign there, that other elephant's the biggest in the world. Well, every circus I ever seen had the biggest elephant in the world. Yeah, yeah, they show. Uh, what's this in this cage over here? Yeah, here's something I never know we had. That's the monkeys, ain't it? Yeah, that's where we've been to keep them, but according to them signs, well, there's something else in there now. Four or five names up there. G O R I L L A. Gorilla. Yeah. Orangutan. Why, that blame you lum all to beat the daylight out of What's the matter with you? I don't you take that back. You can't sit up here and call me no six what names What are you today. talking about? What's come over you? I ain't called you nothing. I ain't said a word to you. I just stand You and... called me a ape a while ago, didn't you? When did I call you a ape? Just a while ago, just before we come in the tent here. <laughs> You're a long time about getting mad about it. I'd even forgot about well, it. Well, I just now found out what it is. That's what you call me, sitting right there in that cage, according to that uh, sign that Squire's got up there. Oh, well, that ain't nothing to get mad about, Abner. I never meant nothing. Yeah, ain't nobody going to call me no such a thing as that and get All away with right, it. All right, I'll take it back then. From now on, I'll just call you a baboon instead of a ape. Yeah, well, that's all right, but don't call me no ape. I'll tell you that. There's something I never know. What's that? Look here. That's I the only know. Siberian possum in captivity. Well, I do know. Ain't that the one you swapped off of Homer Jenkins? Yeah, yeah, his dog's treated right down there at the back of his place. Uh, I bet Homer never knowed he was an extra that the way. He never would have dealt him off to me. Well, that ain't no more a Siberian possum than you are. Huh? What did you say? Then I am, then. Well, that's better. I don't care what you call yourself. That's another misrepresent there. Why, sure it is. I just don't like it, Abner. I don't either, Lom. It just won't pay in the long run. It pays to tell the truth. That's what it does. There's them white mice there. Yeah. What does that sign say there? Sacred white mice from the temple of... Abadab. Abadab, yeah. Yeah. Well, that ain't right, Lom. We know where we got them white mice from. Wait a minute. Hey, Squire, come here a minute. Well, howdy, howdy, gentlemen. I never you just tell him right now we don't want to say nothing about these animals that ain't sold. No, I'd rather just tell the truth about it, regardless. Looks like you've been putting up some signs around here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have to put up a sign, you know, up over the cage, uh, Lum, uh, telling what the animals are, you know, or half the people that come in to see the circus won't know what they're looking at. Yeah, well, it's a good idea, except I believe we ought to stick to the truth, Squire. Uh, the truth? In the circus business? Yeah, six things is that white elephant up there. I just don't feel right about it. Now, I don't need a squire. I think we better just wash that white wash off. We, we don't want to say nothing about nothing that ain't so. No. Well, all right, men. It's, uh, it's your show. And if you say take it off, well, I'll take it off. But now, he'll be a big attraction, man. Ain't no doubt about that. And another thing, that sign there just says he's a white elephant. And if he ain't white, I'd like to see one of his. And then this possum here, too. That ain't no Siberian possum. It was called right down there on Homer Jenkins' this place. Yeah, whoa, well, well, now, look. <laughs> Why, that's just a fancy name for him, you know. I ain't saying that he come from Siberia. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like this uh, sacred cow we got here, you know... There's certain tribes of people that consider old cow sacred. <laughs> no, no, love, I wouldn't misrepresent nothing. No, sir, man, I've got my reputation to think of, you know. Man, of course, I don't know nothing about the circus business, but me and Abner has always tried to be honest and upright in our dealings, and we just don't want to misrepresent nothing. Why, no, no, of course you don't, and I don't either. You know, Squire Skimp, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's my policy, man. All it has been. Well, I'm proud to hear you well, say that. Well, for the sir. land sake, where did this barnet come from? Come here, Lom. Look at this. What is it? Oh, yes, yes. And that's something new we got, man. I just added that to the collection a while ago. There's going to be the greatest attraction of them all. Well, for the great I am. Well, that's the awfulest looking varmint i ever seen. Yeah, it's asleep now, whatever it is. Now, I wouldn't get too close to him there, Abner. He might break out of that cage. Gentlemen, that's the wild man from Borneo, the only genuine wild man on exhibition today. Brought to this country from the darkest jungles of Africa. Hmm. He's wild, he's savage, he's the most dangerous beast to be found in the world today. I believe it wouldn't hurt nothing to 
sort of push some extra bars around that feed there. Yeah, look there. He's got rings in his nose and ears both. Hmm. Granny's, I'd hate to meet one of them things in the road. Oh, me. Where in the world did you get such a critter as that, Squire? Never mind where I got him, Lom. He's here. That's the main thing. Oh, wait a minute. I believe you woke him up then. Okay. Come on back from that cage there, Abner. Uh, can, can a fella talk to him, Squire? Well, yes, Abner, but he can't understand the words you say. He speaks only the language of the jungle, Abner. Squire, if that thing ever got loose around here, the people of Pine Ridge would be scattered all over the United States. Yes, sometimes. well, he won't get loose. Don't you worry about that, Lum. Now, look at him blinking them eyes there, uh, just like a human. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do good he, he come woke up. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, sir. I believe I'll say something to him. <laughs> Howdy do, sir. Uh, uh, howdy. <laughs> howdy, Mr. Abner. Huh? All right, Granny, wait a minute here. Who said that? I dog is he knows me, Lom. <laughs> howdy, Mr. Lom. <laughs> I wish you fellas would make Squire let me out of this cage here. <laughs> Edric, I told you, whatever you do, don't ever speak to nobody that comes around this cage. Remember, you don't understand the word of the English language. <laughs> well, if Cedric is the wild man from Borneo... We wonder what plan Squire has for Lum and Abner's part in the circus. Ladies and gentlemen, we still have a minute left tonight. Let's slip over to the Carrollton home and see what's happening. I think Mrs. Carrollton is getting her son Jimmy off to school. Well, yes, now, Jimmy, you'll be late. Oh, let me finish my milk, Mom. Well, be quick then, son. You know what your teacher said. Oh, all right. Where's my cat? Where you put it last night, of course. Well, it isn't. I hung it up there on the hook. Well, it must have walked off all by itself then. Oh, no, it hasn't, Mom. I did hang it there. I remember. Oh, I don't know. I declare. Well, here it is, Jimmy, under the table. Such a boy. Now, here's your book and your lunchbox. Gee, Mom, what's in it today? Oh, never you mind. Oh, come on, tell us. Well, all right. You've got sandwiches, cake, and an orange. Now do one along, son. Oh, gee, Mom. Why don't you put in some Horlick's malted milk tablets? They're swell. I know you too well. You'd eat them up before lunch and spoil your appetite. No, I wouldn't. Anyway, Horlick's don't spoil your appetite. Teacher said they don't, too. Well, I'll declare. I never heard that. Well, that's true. Gee, Mom, they're better than candy, too. They're good for us, teacher said. Well, I'll get you some tomorrow, son. Now you've just got to run along. Why, look at that clock. You'll never be there on time. Well, we hope Mrs. Carrollton does get some Horlick's tablets for Jimmy. All youngsters love them. And they're certainly fine and nourishing for the youngsters. Get some to try. A small flask costs but ten cents. Also in larger sizes if desired. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.